Recorded live with little or no editing. It's defense up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Today we're going over Mace's defense and we're just going to jump right into it. We grade on five different criteria. It's who you're using, their place with their power levels, their ISOs, and what kind of mood I'm in. Team number one is that YA hot sauce everybody's talking about. Everybody wants this team, right? Because they're the greatest thing ever. They're totally unbeatable. We all got super excited by misreading what Scopely had to say about this team. And all of a sudden, everybody's actually kind of upset because Infinity Watch can still beat them. Um, so I'm going to right out of the gates, tell people, I think my perspective, my opinion, right? You're coming to these videos from my thoughts and beliefs here. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I think you should do from dolphins on down. I think you should skip this team. When I say skip, I mean shelvable, right? You, you always go for the stars, but you don't need to build this team. I think this team is a luxury team for high-end players, Wales Krakens, people in hyper-competitive war alliances. I don't think that most of us, most of the player base need to be building this team, right? If you're one of the 69% of people who didn't finish the milestones in tower mode, you probably don't need to build this team. Um, what is kind of cool about this is that this team, when you build them up like really high, like 700, 800, 900K, the, the handful of counters that this team has start having more and more trouble and they become very, very difficult. Uh, I still think the Zemo factor is probably your best counter for this right now. But when you get this team up to like 800K, that the Zemo factor has a lot of trouble with it. So it's a good solid defensive team however uh it also has the ability that you can unlock one or two people in this team and use them to great effect without investing in the rest of the team you can take america chavez and build a hyper fast eternals defense you can take echo and uh throw her in and 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 you can utilize her to stop those counter assists for certain teams like the Infinity Watch, forcing you to, like if you go Echo and America Chavez with the Eternals, a lot of people are going to try and and go into it with an Eternals Doom to beat it because the Infinity Watch is going to have a little bit of trouble not being able to do their counter assists and stuff like that. There's a lot of things you can do with the pieces of this team and not have to invest in all of it. Because basically, the Young Avengers doesn't really start to work until you have a really big Echo, a really big um, Kate Bishop. Um, America Chavez actually does a lot of work for this team. Like every member of this team is kind of needed. Like you need Miss Marvel to stay alive, to taunt and, and take pressure off of Squirrel Girl so she can heal, so that uh, Kate Bishop can blind, so that Echo can do the counter assists and destroy everybody, and then America Chavez can smack people around. Like, everybody has a part in this team. So if you want to build this team, you got to build the whole team. And it's expensive. And I just don't think that most of us should be doing it. That's my opinion, and that's what you come here for. However, Mace decided to give it a go. He built this team to 400. It's new. It's going to stumble a lot of people up. He's going to get some value out of it. I just think that it's not going to hold as well as he wants it to, as well as we thought it would. It's not the Heroes for Hire 2.0. It's just not that team. And thank God for it, because I don't want to deal with another Heroes for Hire debacle like we had last time. And I think we should stop giving Scopely so much crap about this team, because if we keep getting Heroes for Hire teams, everyone's going to hate war, and I'm going to be out of a job. Okay, so what we can do with this team, we have Skirmisher, Striker, 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 Striker. That's great. Um, Reminex is talking about uh, not doing healer on Squirrel Girl. I'm going to start looking into that. I do I do take what he says uh, pretty seriously. He's a great player in this game. He knows his stuff. So when he says that Squirrel Girl doesn't need to be a healer and that she should be a striker, probably so. So I'm going to look into that. I haven't had a chance to test it myself. Um... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this team. Everything looks like it's going good. It's just you need more power in it to get the value. The more you invest in the team, the more value you get out of it. And it does get kind of expensive to build. So I'm going to give you uh, an A minus for right now. If you can round out the power levels in uh, Bishop and Miss Marvel, I think you'll be doing a little bit better. But that is expensive. So I understand if you don't want to do that. Let's tab over right here. Um, this is great placement, by the way. This is exactly how it should be placed. Team number two is a Merc team with Ultimus and JJ. 
Jade, I understand you're putting JJ in here as a cleanse, but her cleanse comes too late to be a value to the mercs. By then, um, the ability block is already on Taskmaster, and then he's taken his turn. By then, the disrupt goes on the tank, and his taunt doesn't get applied, and then she removes the disrupt. It's pointless. So, JJ's a total waste on this team, but what else are you going to do with JJ, right? She's, she's a worthless character without a home right now. Ultimus is okay, but I don't think that your, ta your mercs is big enough to warrant building Ultimus. I think it's a waste of resources at your level. I think you should just go with straight mercs. Um, how big is your bullseye? He's actually a valuable character uh, to put in here, especially at lower levels because he opens up fast and he assists when the um, riot guard and lieutenant do their thing. The biggest thing that you've got going on here as a mistake is that you have your riot guard and your lieutenant off to the sides. They have adjacent healing. So when somebody adjacent to lieutenant is hit, he heals the lowest member of the team. And then you have adjacent deflects off of Riot Guard. And so those are getting wasted, man. You gotta get them in the middle someplace. I think for this build, you should do something like Taskmaster, um, then probably Riot Guard, and then Lieutenant, and then go maybe Korath the Pursuer, followed by either Shuri or Killmonger, something like that. They're all ideas that you could use. Um, but I don't think, man, Ultimus isn't worth it. He's just not a good enough character. He's very specifically built for high-end Merc teams because of the counters that come into them. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I think this team needs a lot of work. Also, Skirmisher on Taskmaster is great, but you got no other strikers other than Ultimus and he's not doing any, get rid of Ultimus, make your other Mercs uh, strikers. Change the placement, get rid of JJ. This team is actually a hot mess. I do like that you have Taskmaster as a skirmisher and he's built up. So you can get a lot of value out of him if you make your uh, mercenaries strikers. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go with a, a D for this team. You kinda, kinda botched this one. All right, team number three is the Guardians of the Garbage Can plus Coulson. Coulson's better used on other hybrids. I don't like him in on this team. The individual ISOs you're using on these members are okay. I like uh, Star-Lord as a skirmisher by himself. I like Rocket as a raider by himself. Same thing with all these characters. However, I think what you should be doing is going raider on Drax and then well, actually, no, keep him as a fortifier. Keep him as a fortifier, use him someplace else. And then use the three piece that you've got with, with, uh, uh with Star-Lord, Rocket, and Groot. Use that three piece. You want Groot to be Skirmisher, and you want Star-Lord and Rocket to be Strikers. Um, you've already over-invested those, so don't change them. The ISO's just, it's just not worth it. I mean, this is a garbage team. You don't really want to do anything with them, but just leave it here as a filler. I would, however, you got 133 Coulson. I'd take him off of this team and use him somewhere else. There's a lot of good Coulson hybrids where he can open up early and trigger some effects and things like that. Um, you have him as a striker, so you're going to want to put Coulson on a team with other Raiders, so he's using Turn Meter Rewind. This is just a trash team. The best thing you can do with it is leave it alone as a filler and put Colson elsewhere. I, I do like Groot as a skirmisher rocket and Star-Lord as striker so you get the quadruple hit combos. I like using Drax elsewhere as a pre-taunting tank um, to draw some of the opening fire like on a new warriors team. Like new warriors with Drax and um, Emma. That's a great team to be using. So anyway, something to do. Uh, you haven't botched it entirely because, like I said, they're individual ISOs. If they're used by themselves, pretty okay. So I'm just gonna go for a C on this. It's really meh. Just leave it alone and put Coulson in a better spot. All right, team number four is the Fantastic Four with She-Hulk. Let's see, we got Striker, Striker, Skirmisher, ooh, Skirmisher, Healer, Healer. Um, I think Invisible Woman should be a Skirmisher and She-Hulk can be whatever you want her to be. But you've already invested Invisible Woman up to a healer and as a secondary pick, that's okay. Uh, placement is all right. Maybe think about, I don't know. Think about swapping, well, get Johnny to the outside for sure. Let's go Johnny, Mr. Fantastic Thing, Invisible Woman, and then She-Hulk. Uh, so placement swap, leave your ISOs as is. I'm gonna give you a B plus for this. Team number five is the Wave 1 Avengers with Vision, who is terrible, with Thor as the wrong ISO, with Scarlet Witch, who does not belong in here. I mean, she's got synergy with Vision, but come on, th those two are just, they're too old. Maybe if they get reworked when WandaVision comes back out or something, I don't know, but uh, fingers crossed kind of thing. Um, 
Okay. I would like to see you change Thor to a raider. I'd like you to replace Vision with um, Heimdall, probably. And then you could replace Wanda with either Hawkeye or Sif if you really wanted to. Then you still have all the synergy for Thor. You don't have near as much synergy for the other two tanks, but whatever. I just think Thor or uh, Vision and Wanda are just terrible picks for this. You do have Vision as a skirmisher, and if you want his ability to block to stick, you are going to have to go level 5 skirmisher. It is a waste, though. He's just not worth putting that kind of an investment in. And then Wanda, I like her as a skirmisher also. Also, probably level 5, I think, because she does apply some negative effects, but her focus isn't all that bad. Don't build this team. It's too old. I'm, I'm recommending to people now that the Wave 1 Avengers is just a filler team. It's just too old, too many counters. Everybody knows how to beat it anymore. So it is what it is. I would like to see Thor changed to a Raider, but you kind of overinvested there. Uh, this is like a C minus for me. It's pretty blase. Okay, team number six. This is an interesting one. I kind of like this. I kind of like what you got going on here. These are filler leftover tunes. Okay, so you got a Red Guardian taking the taunt in the beginning and everybody's spawning with defense up because of Shuri or basically spawning with defense up. You know how she places it early. Um, then you have Hawkeye putting blinds out, um, slowing people down from doing damage and taking away their effectiveness. It's kind of cool. You even have him as a raider. Good job there. And then you got Grenadier and Red Skull. Grenadier is a striker. I like that. He's clearing positive effects. He's doing some double tap action off of the vulnerables being thrown out by Hawkeye. Everybody else is healer, getting some sustainability in here. He's getting, Red Skull's getting 25% damage reduction because of the Hydra minion. And um, Grenadier's not going away, is he? He's going to come back eight times. So you're going to have to kill Red Skull first, but it's going to be hard to get to Red Skull through all this other stuff you got going on. Not a high damage output team, but you are summoning in those minions. So it kind of requires somebody to come in here with a speed meta team, symbiotes or axemen, something like that. Or maybe doing like a like a Hella Zemo team to spread ability blocks to really take the wind out of their sails or something. I think this is really cool. I think it's a good newer kind of team that you're using your leftover stuff for. Um, I, I like everything that's going on here. What's up, Send Raven? Right on time, buddy. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> he gets into a lot of my videos by, by rating when we do these recordings. I uh, hope your stream was good, my guy. Uh, we were just looking over this defense here, and I'm kind of liking it. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong. These are kind of tunes that don't get a lot of user value elsewhere. You're taking your Hydra team in a different direction and getting some interesting value. Another thing you could do, you could take Hawkeye off of this team and put him back on that Wave 1 Avengers team and replace Hawkeye with that uh, the Hydra tank, that he, the taunting one. Put him in here, right? You'll get almost as much value. Red Skull will be that much harder to get through. I don't know, something to do. I think it's kind of cool. Anyway, this was an interesting build. I'm going to give you an A for this. I don't have any problems with this at all. It's um, it's going to get probably more DVs than this garbage will. And this is something new. I, I, I love new. So there you go. All right. Team number seven is an Emma Rodders with Ghost and Minerva. This team doesn't excite me very much. Minerva is going to revive uh, Strife after he dies. Ghost is just annoying. You don't have anybody. Oh, you do have somebody putting out. Okay. You have one person putting out vulnerables and one striker. So it. who knows if, if Ghost is actually going to land into that vulnerable. Probably be better if you put somebody else in here other than Ghosts, like a damage dealer that... I don't know, man. It's kind of a tough call. You can also get rid of Mystique. Like, there's, It's just kind of a boring team. It's more of a timeout team. You got a lot of power invested in it. You're not really doing anything wrongs, per se. It just doesn't excite me. I I think this is a team that, you know, somebody's going to bring in their Shadowlands, and they're just going to have a stubborn time getting rid of Ghost, and maybe Ghost will get the kill. You don't know. I mean, I'd try taking my Web Warriors into this, honestly. I know Ghost has an unavoidable ultimate, but... I take in the web warriors and just put them on auto, see what happens. I don't know. It's okay. I got to give you the A for it. It's properly built. Everything's going on here, but I just, I'm getting tired of the Marauder builds. I see them so often and there's not very exciting substitutes going on in here. You know, you're probably using your Emma on like an Eternals hybrid or something like that. So it's what it is. I'll give you the A for it. I just hope that maybe 
I'm waiting for somebody to show me something amazing with Sinister on defense. That's what I want. I want to see an amazing team with Sinister on defense. Probably would have to involve Strife just because there's so much synergy there. Like, what are you going to do with your Strife if you get rid of Sinister on this team? I don't know. Team number eight. This is a Doc Ock team. Here's a good spot for your Coulson. You could get rid of um, Captain Marvel and put Coulson in here. And let's take a look at that Wave 1 Avenger team. What was it back? Where was it? Here's that Coulson team. Where's the Wave 1 Avenger team? Where was it? Here we go. Okay, so you could put Captain Marvel in here with that Hawkeye, right? And then put Coulson in on this team. I think you're going to get more value out of that. I like the way Coulson blows up early in here and does the turn meter rewind. You've got Raider on her, Skirmisher on her. So you'd have two strikers, two people putting out vulnerables. That's a good, that's a good mix. There's nothing wrong with this though. It's just Captain Marvel's power creep. She just doesn't have the power like she used to. She opens up early, but like most teams are gonna shrug that alt off after in no time, and it's not gonna be a big deal. And then of course, she's a striker, so she's gonna open up early and there's not gonna be any vulnerables or anything. I just think it's kind of a waste, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna go a minus on this team. You're doing everything right here, but I think you should do that 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 swap on on the people. And then team number nine, we got a Doom Brotherhood team. Okay, we um, the thing we're seeing with this is people are swapping out like Chugrunaut or somebody for like a Death Pool, and catching people off guard. You go into that with the with the Rhino Factor, and Death Pool just annihilates the team because of the mums, and so. Um, that's, I think, what you should probably do is look at where your death pool is or where you're using death pool and put them in here. Um, otherwise, uh, this team is like Rhino Factor just beats this and everybody just uses Rhino Factor. Here's the thing, though. You have the YA team. And right now, the popular counter for this is Zemo Factor. So if they're using Zemo Factor on a one-to-one, -one, if they're using Zemo Factor here, then they can't use it here on team number nine. So that might be a thing to do, right? Soaking up those Zemo Factors with your YA early. If that's what you're doing, then you get an A for this team. It's properly built. I like every all the placement, everything that's going on here. Um, if that was just coincidence, well, good job, you got lucky. But um, if your entire alliance is doing YA, then your entire alliance should do this also, because Zemo Factor is gonna be used on the YA and there's not gonna be any Rhino Factor left over to do this team. So uh, you went Striker on Blob for Turn Meter Rewind. There's only gonna be a few disrupts on the team. I know that two of these people are technically putting out disrupts, but it's not a lot and I don't like that. Don't change it, it's too late. But for me personally, I, I recommend to people that they go with the skirmisher on Blob when you have a bunch of Brotherhood in. He retaliates and he puts out vulnerables. And then you can make people like Pyro or uh, Mags or, you know, you got a striker here with Doom. They can go into those vulnerables and you can get more damage out of them. I think that's a better way to go. Juggernaut does not gain charges with his combo assist. Check msf.gg. He does not gain energy. There's no reason to make him a striker. He should be a, a raider 100%. So I, I don't like the ISOs you got going on here. If you don't do YA, I'd like to see Death Pool in here instead or a different Doom uh, build. But otherwise, I, I do like the YA uh, Doom Brotherhood combo. So I'm gonna go A minus on this. I think you should definitely change Rhinos, or not Rhino, uh, Juggernauts, ISOs. Think about changing Magneto into a striker if you're gonna go with a um, skirmisher there, but uh, Raider's fine too. He gets a crit damage, that's pretty good. You kind of want him to blow up early. So, is what it is. Number 10, of course, the heroes for hire, and you went striker on Iron Fist, which is a, it's a bad choice. It's just flat out a bad choice. I think that's wrong. I, I just think that you should go either Skirmisher or Healer on Iron Fist, and I recommend Skirmisher to everybody because so many of the teams that go into this use Heal Block, and his healing gets negated. So I think you should go Skirmisher. I don't think you get the value out of him being a striker, even though you do have enough vulnerables on the field. I just don't think he does the damage on his basic assist. Like, I don't even remember what his basic assist does. I think it's just damage, right? I don't know, but it, whatever it is, it's not important enough for me to warrant even looking into it. Uh, and then you went healer on Luke Cage. Same thing, heal block on the team. I think you're better off going fortifier on Luke Cage. Now these aren't war ready. Still time to change them. Still time to change them. I think if you're gonna bring them into the blue, switch those up, skirmisher and fortifier, take them into the blue. Rarely is there a case to put fortifier on a character. When they die and respawn, 
or die and revive as this team does, that's the case for Fortifier. So definitely put Fortifier on Luke Cage. You're going to get way more value out of it than the healer ISO. He's too slow and they all use heal block against this team. Otherwise, it's looking good. Um, I like the placement. I like the other ISOs. I like that you're building Shang-Chi up. I, I like all that. So I am going to give you a B plus for this team. I think you're, you're in the ballpark. I would like to see those ISOs changed. Okay, that's been Mace's defense up recording if you would like to have your defense recorded and watch it live on twitch you can come join us tuesdays and thursdays after you find me in my discord and send me your pics and if you can't find me on twitch then you can see me on youtube um well you're probably watching this on youtube so you know you already know where to find me there anyway don't just have a good game be good to yourselves and others too and i'll catch you next time bye